Hey guys, welcome back to the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. This is it then, guys. This is it. This is the day we've not been waiting for. Um, on January the 26th, 2024, Jurgen Norbert Klopp announced he was going to leave Liverpool. And just shy of four months later, we find ourselves here in the game that we never wanted to witness. We never wanted to experience the emotion. We never thought at the start of the season this would be happening, but it is. And this is your match preview for Liverpool versus Wolverhampton Wanderers. Do us a favour, right? We've been great to you. I'll say that myself. Myself, Doyle, Mario, um, Joe, who's been a great addition to the channel. Everyone that works on the channel behind the scenes, everyone that's on the camera in the fan cams. We've done enough work collectively for you to like this video. It's Jurgen Klopp's last one, so please do it. Make sure you subscribe as well. We've got a really special video coming um, all about Jurgen Klopp. Um, very shortly on Sunday as well. So make sure you are involved. Um, shout out to Dave from Talking Wolves. He's uh, our Wolves representative for this video. He sent us a video from the Wolves perspective, which we will play very shortly. But a couple of stats, a bit of context. Liverpool have won 13 of their last 14 Premier League meetings with Wolves. The only one was, of course, that 3-0 humiliation at Molyneux in February last year. Wolves have lost eight of their nine Premier League games away at Liverpool, with the exception being a 2010 1-0 win. And I think it was Ward with the goal. I actually spoke to Mick McCarthy about that game. He was the manager for Wolves that night. Uh, Liverpool haven't lost on any of the last 16 occasions when they finished their league campaign with a home game, winning the last eight in a row. Their last such defeat was against Arsenal, of course, in 89, when the Gunners won 2-0. Horrendous memories. I wasn't born, but still. Liverpool haven't... This is bad, though. Guys, Liverpool haven't kept a clean sheet in any of the last 10 Premier League games, conceding at least twice in each of the last four. They've not conceded multiple goals in five consecutive league games since April 1999, whereas Wolves have lost eight and won just one of their nine Premier League games on match day 38. Don't forget, 2022, we play Wolves on the last day of the season. 2019, we play Wolves on the last day of the season. The supercomputer seems to throw up this game a lot on the last day of the season. So there you go. It is what it is. We're going to have to get on with it. Um, listen, I could sit here for hours. I really couldn't talk about Jurgen Klopp's impact on Liverpool, what it means to be going into the last day of the season, knowing that we, we're not going to see him again. Um, all I can say is I'm going to be at the game on Sunday. I, I'm going to be standing next to my auntie who you know, has been going the game for 30 years and we're both going to be arm in arm crying probably. When that microphone gets handed to Jurgen Klopp, we will be very emotional. And I think Liverpool fans, if you're in the stadium, if you're outside the stadium, if you're around the world watching that, you will be emotional too. And that's okay. That's fine. That's what football's about. So... Let's actually dive into this game and our predictions, the lineup predictions for Jurgen Klopp's last ever game. I think he's going to want to give as many kind of uh, features to as many players as he as he possibly can um, for this last game, knowing that he's never going to manage the likes of Mo Salah, Alisson, Trent, you know, all these guys ever again, potentially. Never say never. But in goal it will be Alisson, who saved us from losing, really, if we're honest, against Aston Villa, as he has countless times in his Liverpool career so far. Um, right back will be Trent. I'm going to go Quanza scored in his last game. Really deserves to keep that start in place. And it's not a... You know, a shot there sent at Canate, it just is what it is. He's fresher, he scored in the last game, so I think he deserves to keep his place. And then we go into Virgil and Robbo at the left side of that defence. I mean, you could play Gomez, you could play Simakas. What do you think? Let me ask you, is he going to go strong or is he going to mix it up for sentimental sake? In the midfield, in my opinion, what it should be is Harvey Elliott, again, deserves his place after that great assist last night for Jarrell. Uh, and then it's Endo and McAllister. Um, I don't know. It's just something about Soboslai that tells me he doesn't deserve a starting place right now. When you look at you know the other players that we've got coming through in that midfield area, i.e. Harvey Elliott, i.e. Curtis Jones. At the minute, I'd go for both of them over Soboslai. And it's a big season for Dom next season to really kind of cement his, his, his final place in that starting 11 in the midfield, which is what he was brought to do, of course. And then up front, I will go Nunez. Oh, hang on, let me start again. I'll go Diaz. I'll go Nunez just to give Gakpo a little break. And then Salah. 
And then again, you might see Connor Bradley, you might see Jota, you, you will see Gakpo, you might see other names um, that have been in and around the squad come on just to get that final Jurgen Klopp seal of approval. Um, and I'm going to go for a Liverpool 4, Wolverhampton Wanderers 1 scoreline. Um, let's see what our Wolves fan thinks. So we've been lucky enough to have Matty and uh, Dave from the Talking Wolves on the channel over the years. Uh, Dave sent over a video encapsulating his feelings going into this last game of the season. And you'll be pleased to know a few nice words about Jurgen Klopp as well. Yes, guys, it's Dave from Talking Walls. Thanks for having me back on the channel. Hope you guys are keeping well and safe. And I suppose you guys are going to be quite emotional um, come Sunday. It's a much, well, I think if you look at the odds as well, it's pretty obvious uh, who everyone's backing in this particular match. But, um, you know, what an amazing career uh, Jurgen Klopp has had at Liverpool. If you, you know, love him or hate him, you can't deny uh, how fantastic a manager he's been for you guys. Um, I think, obviously, it's a shame that, You've sort of tailed off a little bit, obviously with injury issues and what and whatnot over the last couple of months or so. Um, I was adamant when he announced his, his departure uh, earlier on uh, this season. I thought Liverpool were going to win the lot. So um, I think you know, unfortunately, that's that's not been the case. But I think I just think with the way Wolves have been performing and the way Liverpool have sort of picked up form a little bit over the last few weeks, I can only see this game go one one way. To be completely honest. Um, Looking at Wolves, we've had an OK season. Unfortunately, I think it's one win in 10 uh, for us. So it's not been a, a great end to the season. I think we sort of made sure we got that Premier League uh, safety secured. Unfortunately, we lost out in the FA Cup quarter final to, to Coventry. And the season has just slowed down massively then after that, to be completely honest. Obviously, we've had our own injury concerns. I would say our best front three in Neto, Cunha and Huang. They've not started a game together since the end of October. Uh, up until recently, it was the end of January for just Huang and Cunha. So it's been a been a struggle, you know. And unfortunately, the club didn't really back us in, in January to get to get the quality in and um, to bolster our team because it could have been a much better season for us. But um, you know, Liverpool are probably one of the teams that we've struggled the most against since returning to the Premier League. Um, I don't, I can't think of. Uh, you know, we beat you at, at home last season, I think. We gave you a pretty decent game. I thought the reverse fixture, we were really good in that first half and sort of fell apart in the second half, to be completely honest. But Liverpool, you know, I, I can remember us, you know, quite consistently at least getting, you know, we've beat, we've got the double over City before, uh, you know, we've beaten Arsenal, United a few times. So, um, you know, this is always a tough game, especially at Anfield. You know, Anfield's a, an unbelievable ground, such a difficult place to go. I've been there many times, especially on the last game of the season. I think this is like the third time in six years or six or seven years that we've played you on the final day of the season. Um, so, yeah, I mean, in terms of team news for Wolves, Pedro Neto, I'm, I'm still unsure whether he's going to be back available for this game. It's a shame he's been back in training a couple of weeks. I think Gary O'Neill will try his best to at least get him on, on the bench. Um, but I think they've got to try and show he's, that he's fit to maybe have an outside chance of getting in the Euro squad as well. Um, we had a couple of knocks in, in the last game, but Cunha and Huang are back. They're looking good, both getting on score sheets over the last few weeks or so. Um, so I'm hoping that we can trouble you that with that little bit of uh, pace going forward but it just didn't work out against City that's the way I wanted us to play against City play on the counter and without Neto I do think we struggle to do that at times as well um, but we've got players returning I just I can only see it going one way though to, to be completely honest I think it's going to be 3-1 Liverpool, something like that. And I'm normally very positive with four Wolves, but the last few weeks or so, we, we can just see everyone's on the beach now pretty much. We've, we've slowed down massively. And it's going to be a big summer for, for both teams, I suppose. You know, Arnie Slot going to Liverpool is going to obviously be an interesting one. Gary O'Neill, I'm hoping he's going to stay at Wolves um, and potentially sign a new contract. And we just build around, you know, players that he likes, players that he wants to keep around. And, and we go from there. And hopefully a much stronger season for us with a full pre-season under Gary O'Neill next year. And look, we'll be seeing each other again next year. So um, all the best for Sunday, all the best for the su summer. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next campaign. Yeah, nice one, Dave. Thanks for calling in onto the show. Some really interesting insights there into Wolves. Huang and Cunha both back, scored both of them in the last few weeks. Um, so listen, they have players that can really hurt you. Pedro Neto as well in the start of the season was unbelievable. Um, 
And in the end, it just has faded away a little bit for Wolves, maybe since that loss to Coventry in the Cup, as as Dave mentioned there. So um, mixed bag with Wolves. You never really know what you're going to get. I have to say, especially the first half of the season, in my opinion, Gary O'Neill would have been, if he carried on that, that form, would have been up there in terms of manager of the season. I think he's done an excellent job. Obviously, came through at Liverpool. So there's a little connection there. There was a rumour that we were interviewing him to take over Klopp, which was quickly denied, actually. Um, but yeah, Dave, not confident at all. And he's right. We've played each other a lot of times on the last day of the season. I think it's three and six, which is unbelievable, really. And again, that supercomputer needs rebooting. It's got a couple of Trojan horses on it. Um, but yeah, shout out to Dave and Matty from Talking Wolves. They're obviously going for a Liverpool win. Which I will too. I mean, I said earlier in the in the video, I'll go with 4-1 to Liverpool in the end. Um, and guys, there's not much more to say. I mean, from what we know, the uh, process for after the game, there'll be a lap of honour with the players and their families, which is standard every year. I think the game will finish. Everyone will kind of go in um, and there'll be a short 10 minute period where they set up the stage and stuff like that. Um, I'm, I'm hearing there's going to be a stage set up in the middle of the pitch. Um, and then the staff will speak, including Jürgen. And I think there'll be a few special kind of, um, a few special kind of nods to players that are leaving, including potentially Joel Matip, um, Thiago, uh, Adrian, I know is leaving as well. Um, so you can imagine just for everyone involved, it's going to be really emotional. No one's really going to want to leave Anfield uh, when that happens, but you know, when all of that is out the way and we've maybe composed ourselves and, you know, stopped the crying, um, halted the tears uh, in a good way, then uh, we will be outside the stadium doing the fan cam. So if you are at Anfield, if you are lucky enough, like myself, to be at the game on Sunday and have a ticket to the match, make sure you come over to us after the game and speak to the COP TV because it's a special one. It's Jürgen's last ever game at Anfield. And I'm still not ready for it, if I'm honest. I mean, there's a lot of banter and you know jokes flying back and forth about how it's ended from rival fans but for Liverpool fans this is really going to be a really tough day to to digest um even speaking about it now I'm almost you know preparing myself but I'm not prepared I'm trying to but I don't think you're ever ready really to say goodbye to someone like that I wonder what he's going to say I mean nothing that he's not said about Liverpool, the city, the the fans already. I, I genuinely do believe he's an incredible motivational speaker. So he'll leave us with some words um, that will get us choked up and, and hopefully words that really give us hope for next season. And hopefully it's not all doom and gloom and we've got a lot to look forward to as well. But this is uh, a big moment. You know, it's the last ever Jurgen Klopp game on the COP TV, let alone anything else. But we started this channel four and a half years ago with Jurgen at the helm. Um, and next season will be the first game in which Jürgen isn't at the helm. So good luck to Jürgen. I mean, on behalf of the players, um, the fans all around the world, uh, both in Liverpool and Lagos and New York and Jamaica and Asia, um, thank you. Thank you is not even enough. We're, we're eternally thankful, but thank you. Sometimes words just aren't enough. I think genuinely if an opportunity arose where every single Liverpool fan in the world could go into a room and have 30 seconds with Klopp and give him a hug and say something, they'd, they'd take it. Because there still feels like, to me, it's been cut off a little bit too early. Um, but hey-ho, it is what it is. Life is uh, is unfair sometimes. So Jürgen's off. Um, but the club still goes on. The badge still remains. And Arnie Slot will come in and hopefully carry on what Jürgen has laid down foundation-wise. So my lineup prediction, you've heard it. The score prediction, you've heard it. Let's get yours now in the chat and tell me um, what Jürgen Klopp means to you in the comments as well. Uh, that's it from me, guys. Don't forget, we'll be outside Anfield before and after the game filming content. So if you see us, come over. Don't be shy. Say hello um, and you can have your say as well. But until then, take care. And for one last time, thank you, Jürgen. We'll see you soon. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this, make sure you check out the rest of the channel too. There's other stuff you'll enjoy for sure. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the Cop TV. The, the voice, voice of, of football's, football's most, most famous, famous dad. dad. Come on.